Hi and welcome to episode number 460 with whatsforchow.com. In our previous two episodes covering distilling, we looked at freeze distillation, which relied on the massive disparity between the freezing point of water and the freezing point of alcohol. Today's episode takes us to the next step in the evolution of distillation, the pot still. This relies on the disparity in boiling temperatures between water and alcohol. Water boils at around 100 Celsius, depending on the barometric pressure, whereas alcohol boils at 78.3 Celsius. This means that if a fermented wash is heated to around 78 Celsius, the alcohol will vaporize while the water remains. This alcohol vapor is cooled and collected. I must stress that this video is not a recipe. It is merely a demonstration of how the process works. Fermentation and actual distillations will follow in the next few episodes of this course. Also, I must remind you that distilling is illegal in some countries, so please check with your local authorities before getting involved. Back to pot stilling. Today we're looking at the simplest form of pot still, the stock pot still. To understand this, let's first look at a real pot still. You have a large pot. To cover the pot is an airtight dome lid. From the center of the lid, a large gauge pipe rises up, then turns downward. This pipe joins another pipe in the form of a spiral. This cooling coil is encased in a circulating water cooler. The fermented liquid or washer is placed in the pot. Heat is applied to the pot. When the temperature reaches 78.3 Celsius, the alcohol starts vaporizing and escapes through the tube. On running through the coil, it is cooled and it condenses to liquid alcohol, which drips into a catchment. The stock pot still does not require any fancy cooling coils and can be achieved with the simplest of kitchen basics. You need a large stock pot. You will need a dome lid, I use my wok lid and some sort of stand inside the pot. For this I use an upturned colander. You cannot use a solid upturned bowl as gases will be trapped inside the bowl. Then you need something non-reactive to catch the distillate, either a stainless steel or food grade plastic bowl. The fermented liquid is placed in the stock pot. Heat is applied. The inverted wok lid is filled with ice. As the alcohol vaporizes at 78.3 Celsius, it rises and immediately condenses on the chilled lid runs down the curved surface and drips into the collection bowl. Let's have a look at this in real life. I'm using a big digital pot, but you can use a regular stock pot over any heat source. It is, however, preferable to have control over the heat, so I would suggest using an induction range. Here is the wok lid, which I have unscrewed the handle and left the bolt in place to close the hole. For this demo, I'm using El Cheapo Rosé wine. Commercial wines are fermented using yeasts that result in very low levels of methanol and volatiles. In our next episode on distilling, we'll make a high alcohol sugar wash, which is ideal for this process. Empty the wine into the pot. Place the inverted colander into the pot. On top of this is where you will catch the alcohol in another bowl. Place the inverted lid on the pot and set your heat to around 80 Celsius. Pour ice into the inverted lid. Owing to heat below the ice, you will need to drain the melt and top up with ice a few times during the process. I started with 5 litres of wine with an ABV of 13%. This means that there is a total of 650 milliliters of ethanol in the wine. If I collect 1300 milliliters of distillate, I will have a subtly flavored distillation with an alcohol by volume of 50%. Stay tuned for our next episode on distilling next week, 
where we will make a fermented sugar wash from scratch and distill the wash to make vodka. Thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again tomorrow.